GCSE Results Day in a comprehensive on the outskirts of Manchester. The relief is palpable. He's over the moon. Oh, congrats, he's man. So, oh. He's so, he's done brilliant. Well done. He's done so well. Are you dead happy? Yeah, massively. You know JJ was worried about his grades, but he's passed. He wants to be a lawyer. A relief, uh, massively, and I'm shaking with how happy I am. Do you know what? He's done brilliantly. I'm so proud of him. He, he has made such progress in his time here. I couldn't have wished for a better set of results for him. He's been brilliant. I'm so proud of you. You've done absolutely great. The headlines across England following the grade inflation of lockdown when students didn't sit formal exams, as predicted, a drop back down towards pre-pandemic results. The gap between boys and girls is shrinking, the number of top grades down, compulsory maths and English resits up. Given how much uh, in school lessons they missed during the pandemic, is it time to scrap the compulsory resits in maths and English? It's really important that people have maths and English. That's why we do uh, research. You can see in the data that people do a lot better over their lifetime if they get maths and English. So it is worth persevering with maths and English. One student who won't be resitting anything, Macy, who wants to be a psychologist. Check that out. Eight in chemistry and maths. I can see the smile is appearing on that face now. Does that mean the stress is off yeah, the shoulders? Yeah, stress is so, what do you want to say to your daughter, Mom? She's done really well. She worked 100% on the book, so yeah. what she's got, she's earned it. Yeah. Lucy almost got a clean sweep. Eight nines and one seven. I was expecting an eight in maths and an eight in the English, but I got nines instead. You got nines? Yeah. Amazing, well done. What does this mean for what you do next? I'm going to college to study A-levels. I'm doing biology, chemistry and geography because I want to be a dentist when I'm older. Oh, brilliant. We first met Lucy, Macy and JJ in June, slap in the middle of their exams, what feels like an age ago, when their stress levels were soaring. COVID meant their learning had been massively disrupted. There's a lot of education that we kind of missed out on because there's only so much we could do from remote learning, like we couldn't sit there and practice practicals. It impacted like, the basics like maths and English and science. So um, it took a lot of catching up to do when you got to GCSE. So I come in in the morning at eight and then usually we have revision till four o'clock and then we go home, so. And, and, then, and a weekend as well? Yeah, sometimes I come in on a weekend, even some days, which is great. Is it great? <laughs> no. <laughs> Today's other headline, the stubborn gulf in grades between London and the rest of England. In the capital, 28.4% of students received top grades, a seven or above. Compare that to where we are today in the Northwest. 18.6% got those top results, a significant gap that hasn't changed much for years. What does that mean for a school like yours? Uh, for me as a head teacher, it, it all comes back to the individual, making sure that the opportunities that students have in London are the same opportunities that my students in Salford have got. So the partnerships with Manchester University, Salford University, those STEM qualifications, is making sure that I do have the right provision um, for, those, for my students. The teachers, the school, government policy, all of this matters deeply. But at the end of the day, it comes down to the students. Hard work and a little bit of luck.